Hi there, I'm Dan Ayafadjus, urban planner, change maker, and host of CoFutures, the newest channel about city planning in Australia. At school, I was a mad keen geographer. In fact, it was probably one of my favourite subjects to study. In particular, I really enjoyed studying world maps and the art of map making. For those of you who also study geography, you might remember learning about this catchy little acronym to help you remember the different components of a map. It's called BOLTS, which stands for Border, Orientation, Legend, Title, Scale and Source. So I've been making maps for over a decade now and it's only recently that I've actually realised that BOLTS doesn't tell you what goes inside a map, rather what goes around a map. So today, I thought I'd share with you my five essential ingredients to making a great map. The sign of a good map is one that can be easily understood in just a few seconds, but then can continue to hold your gaze. Before I start any map making process, I need to think about what the purpose of the map is. What am I trying to communicate? What story am I trying to tell? Once I've worked out the purpose of the map, I then need to think about the style of the map. Sometimes maps are more conceptual or illustrative. Other times they're more precise and geographically accurate. But at the end of the day, maps are really just a representation of the world that we live in. So you can get a bit creative. Now I've worked out the purpose and the style of my map, it's time to start building the base. Let's take an example of a map that I've been working on recently as part of a mini project to map all of Australia's islands. Generally, I start with natural assets like land, water and green spaces, and then I overlay the more built elements such as roads and public transit systems and key locations. But what you show on a map is just as important as what you don't show. So continuing to edit and make sure that your map is achieving the purpose that you set out to is really important. For the use of colour, textures and different line thicknesses, I can choose to make some features more prominent than others. And this helps to communicate my story. Next, I like to define the context and the extent of my map. This helps to focus the attention on a particular area or geography within your map. Now, this can be done in a number of different ways. I often like to add existing boundaries as reference points. This could include administrative areas or local council boundaries, suburbs or postcodes even. But my map base is looking pretty good now, but it lacks personality. This is when I like to add a combination of labels and symbols and icons to really bring my map to life. During this stage of the process, maps can tend to get pretty crowded, so it's really important to take time to make sure that you establish a really clear visual hierarchy. And finally, last, but certainly not forgetting my high school days, I add bolts. So that's the process I use to create maps. I hope that's provided you with a little bit of insight into the art of map making, or at least giving you some inspiration to go and make your own beautiful maps now. I'd love to hear your map making processes and if there's anything else that you think about when you're creating your map. If you've enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate if you hit that red subscribe button below and follow me along on this journey. And I'll see you next time.